Okay, this is part four. We're going to talk about the Green's refractor. 1926, three ophthalmologists named Green out in San Francisco applied with their designer, the inventor, C.L. Hunsicker, for a patent for what they thought was the, base, the best ferropter of all time. Uh, they tried to sell it to Bausch and Lomb. They got the patent in 1931. Bausch and Lomb said, no dice. You've got a patented mechanism for adjusting the axis of the cylinder. That they're trying to use the uh, the Michael Wolf patent for the cylinder adjustment. And, and what the heck is this? I mean, can you see that? You got a bat You got a battery. Three that three batteries of lenses inside of a big battery. Bausch and Lomb says we can't make that. Go back and redo it. So in 1932. Hunsinker with the two greens because the one of the three greens uh, Passed away. I think it was a father and two sons In San Francisco. This is all in San Francisco. They got the patent in 1934 and that is a greens refractor folks 1934 50% of the patent rights go to Hunsinker and the other 50% go to the two green brother I'm, th I'm assuming brothers. I don't have proof of that 1934 they came out oh boy this one has a Stevens ferrometer on it it's the first time I've ever seen one it's the coolest thing in the world you measure vertical prism the vertical Fourier's right hyper left hyper they measure it here you measure ESO but Nobody ever uses these things. See, because here you got Risley Prism, you got a Manix rod, you got an ear point card. Thank you very much. Hello. Ear point card, everything. <clears throat> I don't really have to talk much about this. Because if you're an optometrist, you probably use many of these. It's the best ferropter ever made. It's got real thin lenses. If you like the new retinoscopy, you get the brightest reflex of any ferropter in the world. Because it goes up to minus 28, and the distance from here to here, no matter what the prescription is, is the smallest of any ferropter. So the reflex during retinoscopy is the brightest of all. They made those from 1934 to 1978. The reason why they had to stop making them in 1978 is because they were tired of being beat at the marketplace by the Ultramatic RX Master. So the, the 1956 RX Master, the Jackson Cross Cylinders, were not yoked the way they are. You turn this, you know, you put the JCC in front, you turn this, then you got to turn this. See there, you turn that, and you turn that separately. In 1967, they were yoked, so when you turn this, the Jackson Cross Cylinder goes with it. And that went viral. It went viral when they didn't even have viral. Every optometrist in the world had to get one. So by 1978, they must have sold a million of those. Green's Refractor was uh, not, too, not as popular. So what they did, Bausch and Lomb, they said, well, we can do that too. And they came out with something called the Green's 2 Refractor which had yoked Jackson Cross Cylinder. Um, I don't want to get into the details about any kind of patent infringement lawsuit that might have ensued. Let's just say that at 1978, they almost made no. They were almost, they were, you could buy one for a few months and then they were off the market. And then we found out that the, the Bausch & Lomb Green's refractor was owned by American Optical. Even the 